Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Hello all and welcome friends to this lecture on Jawaharlal Nehru and uh, from Jawaharlal Nehru we will focus on his uh, major text called uh, Discovery of India, his views on secularism and internationalism. Today in this lecture we will focus mainly on Nehru, his personal and political career, the kind of text he wrote, his involvement in the national politics and also uh, we will discuss his views through discovery of India on socialism, on uh, science and rationality um, and uh, also liberal democracy. So, um, uh, these things we will cover today. In the next lecture, we will discuss his views on secularism and following that we will um, discuss his views on uh, internationalism or India's role in the global arena. So, uh, to begin with uh, to discuss Jawaharlal Nehru, uh, he, uh, he is someone who shaped the uh, politics and society of uh, independent India in its formative years and uh, for a very long time almost for two decades he developed a consensus which we also call Nehruvian consensus and uh, uh, modeled a path for economic, social transformation in um, uh, society and politics which uh, had a kind of broader consensus across the parties, across the uh, heterogeneous sections of Indian society and uh, Nehru played a uh, defining role in developing such consensus in post independent India and prior to independence he also uh, have deep influence uh, in shaping the course of India's national struggle and he was one who um, uh, championed the cause of um, complete independence from the British rule or a kind of aggressive national politics to achieve such, um, such um, uh, independence is someone uh, is something which remains dear to uh, Nehru and he constantly fought, organized and mobilized public opinion around that. So, before he entered into the scene there was different kind of uh, uh, debates going on about Swaraj or dominion status or complete independence or Indianization of bureaucracy or administration within the British rule. Uh, Nehru was someone who uh, began to articulate about the complete independence for India which he asserted. In one of the session he passed this um, uh, resolution about complete um, independence from the uh, British, uh, British rule and also within the Congress there was a um, uh, diverging opinion about uh, uh, social reforms on the one hand and political independence on the other hand, economic planning on the one hand and attainment of Swaraj on the other. Nehru was uh, very clearly articulated and asserted the need for political power to attain social reforms or also economic transformation of the society and uh, he uh, made it very uh, clear or convincing to many of his followers and to the Congress that the attainment of Swaraj is necessary for social reforms and the economic transformation of um, India. We uh, find in Nehru that he was the first and the uh, till today the longest serving prime minister of independent India for 17 years and he had a defining impact on the politics and society of post independent uh, India. In Nehru we also have a kind of unusual uh, uh, combination of intellectual on the one hand and public uh, 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 practical political leader on the other hand. 
one has to make this distinction between an intellectual who uh, envision or who articulate the social problems and uh, provide the remedies or solution for such um, um, uh, such problems or uh, challenges and uh, a political pragmatic leader is someone who who is immersed in the politics of his time and uh, uh, guided by the necessity of uh, such uh, uh, such times or requirements of such uh, such context so intellectual in nehru has a kind of vision for a state and society uh, of modern india a practical pragmatic leader in nehru uh, also uh, realized the possibility or feasibility of certain um, uh, certain goals and also the lack uh, lacking or weakness in the congress and also in the indian society and therefore there is a also a uh, element of compromise or a kind of uh, pragmatic approach in his politics and his thought and also in uh, his ideas on many of the issues so nehru has this unusual combination of an intellectual and also a practical political leader which is reflected in many of his writings and his speeches nehru was the staunch critic of religious metaphysical or revivalist politics which he regarded as the greatest impediments to the cause of national liberation uh, liberation so uh, during the national movement and even in contemporary india there are many uh, kinds of politics guided by a particular identity be it religious linguistic regional or sectarian and uh, there is also the re revivalist tendency or religious flavor in such uh, uh, such politics nehru is someone along with gandhi and he gave uh, uh, gave it a proper shape during the national uh, national movement uh, and um, um, for him uh, the identities of uh, religion caste or uh, language or region hardly matters in his conception of uh, indian or in uh, india's struggle for freedom or the india he uh, he and his colleagues were envisioning so um, uh, for him the organization or the parties who uh, promote such religious metaphysical or revivalist politics is a greatest impediment to the national liberation and therefore he criticized uh, muslim leagues and other uh, religious uh, religious parties including hindu mahasabha and many other religious organization he wanted indian nationalism to be constitutive of secularism rational scientific and international outlook for nehru india's liberation or india's struggle for freedom is necessary or inevitable for india to play a greater role in the world politics and to do that he wanted indian nationalism to be constituted of not a narrow sectarian identities or revivalist tendencies but a secular which is uh, 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 which is free from any kind of religious uh, 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 religious identities of uh, a person or a community so uh, he developed the conception of india which is free from any kind of religious biasness or other kind of uh, uh, prejudices and also nationalism should have a rational or scientific outlook with a international approach or international outlook as well where india cannot remain isolated from the larger politics so in the interdependent world and nehru argued in many of his uh, writings to think of independence is also a neg negative connotation that means uh, no country in the interdependent world can sustain itself in isolation from the other other uh, other nations or other countries so therefore he understood this negative connotation of independence and yet he uh, he uh, he fought and he believed in complete independence of india from the british rule uh, british rule and uh, he argued that a nation suppressed or ruled by a foreign uh, country cannot contribute positively in the larger community of the nation and therefore um, a, a therefore he was first to understand and realize uh, that india has to have a international outlook even when it is fighting for its own national liberation so he 
extended his solidarity to the freedom struggles that is going on in different uh, countries of Asia and Africa and uh, also uh, uh, provided leadership in non-alignment movement and other uh, global, um, uh, global uh, politics or organization to, uh, to assert the demands and articulate for a peaceful and harmonious world. So, uh, for uh, Nehru, Indian nationalism also has a kind of international outlook in its uh, constitu constitutive elements. It is not isolated, it is not solitary or not confined to a particular religion or a particular uh, territory and uh, yet it uh, uh, continued to fight for the um, independence from the foreign, uh, foreign rule. So, that is something which um, uh, which is there in many other thinkers we have discussed when they think or imagine about India, the global or the international um, uh, politics or uh, issues remain deeply embedded in their thought and thinking and Nehru is no exception to that. In Nehru, uh, uh, we also find that he, uh, he deeply venerated Gandhi and Gandhi trusted him the most and therefore, he is also regarded as the heir apparent of Mahatma Gandhi. So, they deeply shared each other's concerns and mutual respect and also their uh, service for the masses and not uh, so power, politics or independence for them to uh, transform or to uplift the millions of starving or uh, exploited uh, or oppressed uh, masses of India. So, he was president of Indian National Congress for four times and was made the prime minister of the independent India. During his long years of prime ministership, he had molded the course of India both at national as well as the international level for 17 years almost. And uh, he also kept foreign policy portfolio with him and had profound influence in shaping the foreign policy of free India. From the strategies for planning and development to the making of foreign policy, he had an immense impact on the present and future of the country and very rightly therefore, he is regarded as the architect of modern India. So, no uh, personality, no uh, thinker has such a great influence or defining influence in shaping the destiny of a nation uh, nationally or internationally as uh, Nehru did and therefore, it is uh, rightly said. Uh, that uh, uh, Nehru is one of the greatest architect of modern uh, um, modern India. One of the uh, texts uh, to really uh, understand the uh, passion or the objective of Nehru and his um, um, uh, his uh, struggles uh, for uh, socialist uh, transformation of society and economy along with a parliamentary liberal form of uh, uh, democracy and he was also a great institution builder. So, many IITs, IAMs, uh, academies uh, are built by, uh, by Nehru. So, uh, for first uh, uh, formative years, he uh, played a very significant role in building the democratic institutions and uh, shaping the democratic culture in post. Uh, independent uh, free uh, India. One of the text or a speech one can uh, read uh, about his passion for future India is uh, his tryst with destiny and uh, there he envisioned uh, uh, the long cherished goal of many of the leaders of nationalist movement that was about wiping or tears from each eyes and uh, that is uh, connected with the idea of Sarvodaya or Antyodaya in many uh, modern Indian uh, thinkers or political thinking, which is to serve the masses, the serving, uh, the uh, starving or the oppressed masses that is the goal of uh, independence and so long as that goal is not achieved, the work is not uh, uh, complete as well. So, uh, he provided such objectives or set such uh, goals for free India to achieve and that help in developing what we also called and uh, the lecture I have begun with the Nehruvian consensus. The uh, land acquisition, the uh, centralized planning or mixed economy 
or institutions building is all to achieve certain objectives to which all agreed. There was a consensus on uh, uh, on that. Now, at the international level, in uh, Nehru, uh, he was uh, one among the most prominent leaders of non-alignment movement, which continues to play a greater role in the uh, international affairs or international relations. He also extended support to the freedom struggles in other countries, as we have discussed and had consistently argued for the independent foreign policies of the newly emerging countries in Asia and Africa. And he played a leading role in the formation of non-alignment movement. Internationally, he was a non-figure in anti-colonial, anti-imperial and anti-fascist struggle and movements. So, his humanistic or international outlook enabled him to understand the consequences or the evil consequences of the fascism and therefore, uh, he accepted democratic uh, parliamentary forms as a uh, uh, acceptable form for social and economic transformation as well and uh, uh, criticized all form of authoritarian uh, uh, rule and uh, politics. Um, he was equally critical of um, uh, the imperial or the colonial power who, who were fighting the fascist forces on the one hand and yet legitimizing imperialism and subjugating colonial uh, people to their oppressive, authoritarian and exploitative rule on the other. Nehru uh, developed a kind of um, uh, critique to both fascism and also imperialism and col uh, colonialism and he was uh, prominent um, uh, leader uh, in uh, the struggle against the um, imperial or colonial forces on the one hand and also uh, the critique of uh, fascist uh, politics on the other. Apart from being a political leader, he was also a leading intellectual of his time as we have discussed there is a combination of a political leader or a pragmatic political leader on the one hand or intellectual visionary on the other. And Nehru was a kind of uh, idealist immersed in the politics of uh, uh, his time. So, there are very uh, few individuals in the history like Nehru, he embodied together the ability of efficient statecraft with the intellectual thinking or the intellectual vision. He was the founder editor of uh, a, a, a newspaper called National Herald and wrote frequently in national and international dailies and magazines. And through his writings, he conveyed the world India's struggle for freedom and its unique methods of non-violence and satyagraha to achieve it. So, like Gandhi, Nehru also used uh, his writings to convey uh, to the world about India's uh, struggle for freedom, India's oppression and the uh, uh, unjust rule of uh, uh, British uh, in India. So, he spent, um, uh, so uh, his writings become also a tool for uh, mobilization, um, for mobilizing uh, national opinion as well as the, op uh, the opinion of the other countries in uh, solidarity with uh, uh, India's struggle for freedom and also through that he uh, extended his solidarity to the other freedom struggles going on in different countries of Asia and Africa. He spent a considerable amount of time in jail about 10 years over a period of around uh, 30 years from 1917 to 1947 and he wrote most of his texts in the jail and uh, these are now published as glimpses of the world history which he wrote as a letters to his daughter Indra Gandhi which is published in 1934 an autobiography in 1936 and the discovery of India in 1946. These books, especially his discovery of India are still in print and are widely, uh, widely read. So, uh, this text discovery of India uh, is very profound, not just for Nehru, for him it is a personal journey to understand and comprehend the nuances, the uh, mystery or the timeless past of um, uh, Indian civilization, its philosophy and history, but also for many fellow na uh, nationalist, fellow colleagues and even for future generation, this text uh, remain a reference point to understand the different uh, personalities, different phases of Indian, Indian history. 
and uh, remarkably when he was uh, deeply involved in the politics of his time, he wrote such text in uh, incarnation when he, he was in jail and that shows the profound ability of Nehru to grasp or to understand not just education he had in West in England, but also the ancient philosophies and history, uh, history of India and this text remain widely read text and most uh, referred uh, text even today. During his prime ministership however, he also wrote letters to the chief ministers of different states of India every fortnightly. He make, made it a point to write to the chief ministers who are supposed to govern the states in different parts of India and he continuously wrote every fortnightly from 1947 to 1963. And in these letters, which contained a wide range of topics concerning India's internal as well as the external role from economic development to linguistic and religious politics, the ethics of governance and the Cold War or India's place in the global world, the role of nuclear energy and uh, etc. institutions and all. So, Nehru was a prolific writer also and had a deep uh, sense of the requirements of the time or, or a country or the context and how to solve it and he was equally efficient in statecraft. So, uh, there is a kind of um, unusual mix in Nehru as a successful political leader, equally a prolific writer and also uh, an intellectual uh, visionary. So, uh, these letters of Nehru later in 1980s published in five volumes and each volumes contain more than 500 pages and which is the living history, uh, India's uh, proof of India's living history during the time of uh, Nehru's uh, prime ministership. In addition to this, Nehru was also a self critique and also wanted himself subjected to popular and public scrutiny and critique. So, uh, he wrote about himself, his dreams and aspirations of India and sometimes writing about his personal life had put, put him in extreme vulnerability, but he wanted himself and his deeds to be subjected to public critique and scrutiny. So, this is something a deeply democratic traits in uh, Nehru, uh, Nehru's personality when throughout the freedom struggle certainly after Gandhian phase of 1920s, he was uh, second in terms of popularity to Gandhi. And after the independence, he was uh, the unrivaled leader except for a brief period between uh, often quoted uh, 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 rivalry between Patel and Nehru. So, despite of their uh, 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 differences or approach to politics, they were also uh, collaborators and they helped in shaping the destiny of, uh, uh, of modern India. But after the death of uh, Patel, Nehru remained unrivaled uh, uh, leader and yet uh, deeply democratic traits in Nehru allowed him to subject himself and his deeds to pop, uh, popular and public uh, critique and he believed in that democratic culture which he wanted India to foster or uh, which he wanted in India to be strengthened. So, uh, there is one instance when he, uh, he wrote to the famous cartoonist Sankar and he told him Sankar do not spare me. So, that is uh, a democratic uh, traits which uh, Nehru had and he wanted that to be built and strengthened in India's uh, political life or political culture, not the cult worship or blind following of a leader or a person, but subject him, him, uh, him and his deeds to public and pop, uh, pop, uh, popular uh, scrutiny and critique. So, uh, with Nehru, uh, we also find in, uh, uh, he is portrayed in multiple frames due to both his own interpretation and also appropriation of him by his followers as well as his critics. He is loved and admired and also criticized at the same time for anything or uh, there is a mistake. So, uh, uh, at the same time for anything and everything India has achieved or not achieved. So, he was there at the helm of affairs for a very long time. So, anything that India has achieved and not achieved, uh, Nehru is 
consider responsible for that and uh, and as i was saying there was a kind of nehruvian consensus but when there was um, this disillusionment with such nehruvian consensus he is regarded as the villain of all the uh, missed opportunity uh, 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 which india uh, india missed and which india could not achieve so he is uh, loved and admired uh, for many of his deeds for shaping uh, uh, certain cultures establishing certain institutions and also uh, modeling india in uh, in a path of parliamentary democracy with a centralized economy and planned development and uh, for many uh, uh, unachieved which india could not achieve he is con he is considered uh, uh, considered uh, responsible for that too as well so he remains uh, however he remains one of the most prominent and tallest figure in modern india who has defining influence on all works of national life and which we continue to discuss even uh, in our contemporary politics now to look at nehru and his times much like his contemporaries nehru belonged to a middle class english educated family and he was born into a kashmiri brahmin family who migrated to allahabad and he was born in 1889 and his father motilal nehru was a very successful uh, lawyers and he was closely associated and sympathetic to the moderate method of uh, politics nehru uh, had a very progressive views and was skeptical about religious matters and disregarded the caste practices and also followed inter caste dining in his personal uh, life so he was against such uh, such politics or revivalist politics Nehru's future philosophy to a great extent was shaped by this progressive views and ideals of his father Motilal Nehru and Motilal Nehru played a very significant role in later years and Nehru again played a very uh, significant role in bringing Motilal Nehru uh, and Mahatma Gandhi together and uh, Motilal Nehru uh, uh, played a very significant role in the making of all party constitu uh, constitution which we also called uh, nehru report uh, in late in, uh, later years so uh, nehru uh, had a great influence on him from many of his uh, many of the ideals and the beliefs of his father motilal nehru uh, after his uh, uh, home tutoring or private uh, uh, tutoring he was educated in haro uh, uh, and in trinity college cambridge in england and in trinity college he studied science and after study, uh, studying law at inner temple in london he returned to india in 1912 just before the beginning of first world war uh, he practiced law for few years but he did not had uh, much uh, passion or enthusiasm for the profession and he therefore uh, jumped or committed himself to the india's struggle uh, for freedom in his initial years after returning to india nehru did not like uh, the approach that was taken by the moderate groups and was more in favor of the radical politics of extremist like tilak he wanted an aggressive politics against the fo uh, foreign rule or foreign um, uh, yoke on india and did not like the uh, petitioning or the constitutional methods followed by the moderate groups in the congress therefore he uh, find himself more closer to the tilak modes of politics or the extremist methods of politics although he was emotionally attached to this aggressive nationalism of tilak it had some religious underpinnings uh, which nehru could not support and therefore he grew closer to the gandhian modes of uh, uh, politics so his guide became uh, mahatma gandhi with whom he shared a relationship such intimate as that of his son and a father so he refers to gandhi as bapu so both uh, the leaders the tallest leader of a national uh, movement was also sharing a intimate relationship between them and gandhi had a great and deep influence on nehru and his uh, ideals and his uh, his politics Nehru had in turn complete faith in Gandhian methods of non-violent satyagraha for the attainment of swaraj however uh, and also uh, the two leaders share uh, this common belief in politics for the service of masses and not for the uh, 
uh, attainment of power or uh, uh, position. So, Nehru also has an independent appeal which allow Gandhi to, uh, to reach uh, or, or uh, in Nehru Gandhi find a trusted uh, lieutenant or a, fall, um, a, um, a leader who uh, can uh, inspire the millions in uh, this non-violent struggle for India's freedom. But however, despite of their similarities and mutual uh, uh, respect or uh, 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 trust, they also differed with each other on many issues. While for Gandhi, such as, while for Gandhi religion was the supreme thing, Nehru was indifferent to it. In fact, Nehru was agnostic to any religious beliefs and uh, uh, faith. But uh, Gandhi was a deeply religious person and for him uh, uh, religion is the supreme thing and there is a different uh, uh, interpretation in Gandhi about religion and role of religion in the politics. Nehru was uh, indifferent and agnostic to any religious uh, uh, beliefs and faith. Nehru was a supporter of a centralized planned and industrial model of development while Gandhi was in favor of decentralization and a small scale cottage industries. Again, uh, while Gandhi uh, regarded the state as a soulless machine and therefore he was skeptical of state uh, power, Nehru thought of a state as a means for social and economic transformation and therefore he argued for interventionist state and in modern India, the state that emerged or uh, the many policies uh, it, uh, Nehru formulated is in line with the role of a state and central role of the state in social and economic transformation. So, they uh, differ a lot on many issues despite they share a lot of uh, views or mutual respect or admiration to each other's uh, capability and also their service to the motherland or especially the million of um, oppressed masses. Uh, and uh, in Gandhi and Nehru, we also find uh, Nehru being more pragmatic or more political and uh, realizing the role of political power for the attainment of Swaraj and also for social economic transformation. But Gandhi remain more a kind of uh, moralistic or ethical uh, leader uh, with uh, a very ethical uh, views on uh, on politics. So, many methods that Gandhi applied, uh, Nehru thought of its relevance as uh, most appropriate in the condition of India for the attainment of its Swaraj. So, he do not have a kind of moralistic or ethical views on uh, those ideals or the methods, but for Nehru it is helpful in attainment of Swaraj and therefore, he thought it as most, uh, most appropriate. Uh, uh, method uh, for politics. However, yet uh, despite these differences, it was their common belief in democracy, freedom and non-violence that made them so close to each other. Gradually, Nehru's understanding of India, especially rural India, which he learned and uh, which he uh, undertook from Gandhian uh, methods or Gandhian uh, uh, on the uh, through Gandhian advice. So, uh, when he uh, began to understand uh, the rural India, this enabled Nehru who has uh, western education or the ideals which is um, very different from the rural India or in the words of uh, Gandhi the real India is in the rural India. So, uh, Nehru had the first hand experience of the lives of the rural India, their challenges, their uh, uh, concerns and it enabled Nehru to uh, speak to both the western educated middle class on the one hand and uh, uh, Indian peasants on the other. And uh, this uh, uh, gave him the popularity in national movement which was second only to Gandhi. Now, to look at discovery of India, we find in uh, this text, western educated Nehru often find himself at loss with the vast plural and timeless India. In discovery of India on many occasions, he find himself at loss in this vast, uh, uh, vast nation and uh, uh, 
he was uh, unable to find himself fit in the larger uh, politics that was unfolding in india and he was trying to connect his own self with the uh, with the uh, history philosophy culture and moods of india and um, its people so discovery of uh, uh, through his involvement with the national movement he came closely in contact with millions of indians their cultures languages civilization and philosophy his discovery of india in many ways was his own journey his own personal journey to understand and comprehend this timeless india he acquired a deeper appreciation of indian history and philosophy which has profound impact on his thought and politics so a western liberal educated nehru who find himself at many times a misfit in indian context was trying to connect with the history or philosophy of india and this discovery of india is such text which enables him or which allow him to understand the nuances or the un, uh, unfolding or evolution of indian history and philosophy so with the arrival of independence and that too in the turbulent period marked by partition and internal challenges such as integration of the princely states the future of india was a matter of urgency so what should be the future of india what should be the uh, nature of a state in future india what should be the objectives or aims of future india and uh, nehru had a great and defining role in this entire debate of modeling india or modeling future india uh, his ideal india was to be a secular democratic socialist country with the existence of social equality and individual freedom so uh, we'll discuss his views on socialism uh, so uh, he was committed to socialism and he wanted restructuring of indian society and economy according to the socialist path and yet he was the believer in individual uh, freedom or parliamentary form of democracy he wanted india to combine the secular democratic ideals of parliamentary form of democracy and the socialist principle of restructuring the society and economy so for it he advocated uh, advocated a welfare state with centralized planned economy in the international sphere he wanted india to be an anti colonial anti imperial voice living in mutual cooperation and harmony with other nations so we will discuss more on this when we will discuss uh, nehru as a uh, internationalist or his views on uh, global uh, politics and uh, some of the principle like panch seal and non cooperation so since his ideals of secularism and india's role in international sphere will be discussed separately in the following lecture here the focus will be on his vision of socialist democratic and scientific india and this we will discuss one by one to look at the socialism nehru was greatly inspired by uh, socialism he was also inspired by the marxist interpretation or the communist views on uh, politics but he was never a convinced communist he regarded economics as the basis of social or economic changes and uh, he uh, derived a lot of um, uh, insights from the marxist interpretation of history but he was never a convinced marxist or communist he inf- he was influenced by the fabian uh, modes of socialism during his uh, uh, stay in england and he uh, was um, influenced by barnard saw or uh, russell also so uh, he uh, uh, so unlike many socialist Uh, uh nehru was also uh, somewhat compromised understanding the nature of indian uh, national congress which has uh, representation from different sections of society who not necessarily share common uh, interest so there is a kind of conflicting it- interest between the peasants and workers on the one hand and landlords and uh, indian capitalists on the other hand and congress as a party claim to represent the interest of every section of society so socialist socialism in nehru was in uh, not a kind of consistent uh, so, uh, socialism like in any other uh, uh, any leaders uh, who was committed to or abided by the socialist philosophy nonetheless 
his belief in socialism and role of socialism remain um, uh, remain on uh, uh, remain strong and he uh, gradually molded congress to uh, to accept the socialist uh, path of economic and social uh, transformation so nehru was the most influential proponent of socialism in india and he did not only give socialism a central uh, place in the working of congress but also had a decisive impact in advocating for india or indian state to have a socialist outlook and uh, uh, and agenda so the nehruvian consensus was deeply influenced by the socialist ideals as well so he regarded the capitalist and the landlords responsible for the impoverishment of people and considered socialism as the most appropriate way for reducing poverty and suffering in india so uh, socialism for nehru was then not merely an economic doctrine but hold the position of a vital creed to uh, to uplift the poor and the marginalized in india however nehruvian socialism uh, socialism is distinct in two ways firstly he did not support the theory of class war or ruthless suppression of dissent as in many socialist uh, countries for him democracy and socialism was complementary and only in the presence of individual freedom socialism becomes meaningful so uh, there is a kind of combination of a uh, 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 strong faith in and belief in individual freedom with the collective uh, uh, politics or uh, uh, social uh, uh, socialism uh, on the other hand so uh, for uh, nehruvian brand of socialism there is a combination of democracy uh, as a um, uh, form of governance which believes in individual freedom and socialism as the common uh, ownership or state ownership of economy uh, uh, economy and industry so uh, nehru was trying to uh, combine uh, the two secondly he did not think that application of socialism should be imitated from the west because for him indian context was different and it requires a specific kind of socialism suitable to its own context so he was uh, ag against the blind imitation of the socialism followed in the western uh, country so many marxist and socialist which tries to study india from the text written in um, a western context or in some uh, other countries unable to fail uh, unable to uh, understand the indian realities and its requirement and specificities and therefore their modes of politics remain uh, ineffective or not as effective as uh, a nehruvian uh, model of uh, socialism uh, was for a very long time so he added to the idea of socialism a moral concern which is the humanist in uh, nehru so he wanted socialism with a human face and socialism is possible he thought even without a violent overthrow of existing system so the peaceful transformation through planned economy or centralized economy is something what uh, nehru was looking for without a rupture without a violent overthrow of existing system of oppression and um, suppression so his distinctive method of socialism is signified in the provision of a welfare state land reforms planned economy of development or cooperative or community development programs that he initiated his views on liberal democracy nehru envisioned india as a liberal democratic nation in both its principle and practice and uh, he shares uh, with many liberal uh, scholars and uh, thinkers the belief in the individual uh, uh, capacity to transform his life and uh, the role of such transformation in the life of community and nation and uh, uh, the path that he wanted india to follow is a liberal path of parliamentary democracy and therefore he also uh, uh, believed in the form uh, institution or uh, or development or social economic transformation through the parliamentary method of negotiation discussion and debate 
So, uh, for Nehru, democracy is essential for the development of both individual and society. While individuals cannot develop in the absence of rights and freedom, society too cannot prosper, prosper if it lacks the democratic environment. So, Nehru had a shift in his conception of democracy. In his initial years, he regarded democracy as synonymous with Swaraj, that is the self-rule and responsible government. So, from the political strand of democracy, he later developed a much broader understanding of democracy which entail the economic and social dimensions of freedom. So, much like Ambedkar which we will discuss separately, uh, Nehru also uh, in his conception of democracy was not limited to the institutional, legal or the political de uh, uh, definition of democracy which enabled everyone equality in terms of uh, political rights to vote and get elected or the legal rights, but also included the social and economic rights to exercise such political and legal rights. So, this is more closer to Ambedkar's understanding of democracy which we will discuss uh, separately. So, he wanted uh, uh, India to follow a path of parliamentary liberal democracy, but that should not be limited to the political and legal equality alone, but it should also include the social and economic transformation or freedom uh, to the million of uh, uh, the poor or marginalized especially. So, uh, his conception of democracy was also related to then the equality. It is only with the presence of equality that individuals and social dimension of freedom can coexist and help democracy sustain. So, there is a kind of cautious approach to Nehruvian understanding of democracy and here it is also perhaps uh, useful to connect with the uh, Granville Austin definition of Indian nation or Indian constitution not as a legal document or a text of governance, but also a text of social revolution. So, which way to social revolution? So, uh, nationalist leaders or uh, uh, many parties wanted India to uh, follow a uh, path of social and economic revolution, but what should be that path of social and economic uh, uh, revolution? That path is the parliamentary uh, form of liberal democracy which, ga uh, which Nehru also uh, promoted and wanted India to follow. So, his conception of Nehru, uh, uh, liberal uh, democracy uh, with parliamentary form of uh, democracy is about individual freedom, uh, his uh, legal political rights along with the social and economic rights. Without the coexistence of social economic rights, political and legal rights alone cannot make, make more sense and uh, Nehru was constantly trying through his welfare programs, through his centralized planning, through uh, community development programs and many other policies of the state to address the social and economic needs of the people as well. We, we will discuss more uh, more on this when we will discuss Ambedkar. Now, finally, to science and rationality, uh, Nehru regarded science and technology as a means to modernize India. He also differs from Gandhian modes of politics and uh, approach and his uh, religious uh, views on many of the modern uh, industries and technology. Uh, Nehru considered big dams as the temple of modern India. Nehru regarded the science and technology as a means to modernize India. It is through rationality and scientific temper which he uh, developed during his stay in England and he studied science there in Trinity. So, he believed that rationality and scientific temper alone can overcome uh, the dogmas that uh, that is there in India uh, along uh, and superstitions and degrading state of existence, poverty, subhuman condition of life and many irrational beliefs and practices that India has which is impediment to its growth and many uh, much of the resources is spent on such irrational or uh, um, superstitious uh, beliefs and practices can be used for the pro progress or the upliftment of the masses. And for that to happen, he wanted India to follow a rationalist, uh, rationalist or scientific uh, temper and outlook. So, uh, science is the basis of revolution, uh, revolutionizing human life in every society. 
but in addition to fulfilling the individual requ requirements science should be used to serve the greater needs of community and he illust uh, uh, nehru illustrated this that it was science alone that could solve these problems of hunger and poverty of insanitation and illiteracy of superstition and deadening custom and tradition of vast resources running to waste of a rich country inhabited by a starving people so such uh, contradictions where the starving masses uh, suffer even when the national resources is wasted on superstitions dogmas or uh, irrational beliefs and practices uh, the uh, widely prevalent illiteracy or uh, subhuman uh, condition of life can be overcome when uh, a country or a state or a community follow this rational scientific outlook uh, he stated that uh, he stated that the scientific temper should be adopted as a way of life so uh, the mode of thinking and the guiding principle so science and uh, uh, technology for uh, nehru is not just to construct uh, some uh, project some dams or uh, some uh, tools but it should be adopted as a way of life as a guiding principle or as a way of thinking only then it it can rebuild individual and it his or her character and also the character of the community and nation so it was in his opinion absolutely necessary to build modern india so the modern india he envisioned should be built on the basis of science and rationality and not on the basis of religious other worldly or spiritual superstitious thinking so uh, his emphasis on science is evident from these lines where he writes that we have to build india on a scientific foundation to develop her industries to change that feudal character of our land system and bring her agriculture in line with modern method to develop the social service which she lacks so utterly today so the economic uh, or social transformation of india that it should follow should be guided by this uh, science and technology modern science and uh, technology and which in, uh, which can resolve many of the uh, tensions or contradictions that exist in indian uh, indian society uh, of that time so uh, in nehru's vision we find according to uh, benjamin jacaria that uh, nehru's vision of india was a most humane rational and inspiring vision that had a great impact on the political culture of post independent india for a very long time his consensus was acceptable to different parties different groups and all all the sections of indian society which we call nehruvian consensus so uh, he combined socialism with liberal democracy liberal democracy with humanism nationalism with internationalism and that uh, gave nehru a popularity and ex acceptance not as a leader of india but also as a global statesman so uh, however but to what extent it was realized is a matter of debate so as i was saying that many thing india has achieved or not achieved nehru is considered res responsible for that and there is a divided opinion uh, on that so it can be argued that it continues to dominate his ideals continue to uh, dominate or shape the politics in free india for uh, many decades with the emergence of new social and economic forces certainly the capitalism especially after the liberalization or privatization of economy or what we also call globalization and changes in the international politics especially the decline of ussr which was a kind of influence on nehru and many of his ideas on social and economic transformation was influenced by his visit to russia so uh, with the decline of russia Nehruvian model has certainly suffered a setback but Nehru was not just a socialist but a democratic institution builder in Nehru and his ideals remain relevant in in contemporary times as well when we find many institution succumbing to the um, uh, pressure of all kinds so a democratic uh, uh, traits or ideals 
in Nehru and uh, his views on liberal democracy and his respect for institutions and development for a democratic culture and subjecting uh, authority or, um, uh, or uh, himself to public political scrutiny is something which will remain relevant for Indian politics for times, uh, for times to come and certainly in our contemporary times as well. So, his views on scientific uh, temper or rationality or uh, uh, considering India's role in the global politics is something which will again be very relevant for uh, Indian, Indian politics in many years, uh, many years and decades uh, to come. So, uh, we will have um, uh, two more lecture on Nehru, where we will discuss his view no, views on secularism and internationalism and then we will conclude. So, uh, on uh, this lecture, we can look at some of these texts, especially his uh, discovery of India by Jawaharlal Nehru and this biography of Nehru by Benjamin Jakaria and the other texts which uh, we have uh, been using like sources of Indian traditions, political thought in modern India and also foundation of Indian political thought by V. R. Mehta. So, these texts you can refer to for this lecture on Nehru. Thank you. Thanks for listening.